Welcome to Elementary by Ticket Tape. This is Ujwal, and in this episode, we'll discuss what an index is and how it's constructed. Golu and Gudia are getting married. Badhai ho. There's a lot of excitement, but also a lot of headache on who all to invite. With COVID marriage party restrictions in place, they can invite a maximum of 50 people to their wedding. But there are more than 300 people who must be looking forward to the free food. We have immediate family members, long lost relatives. friends colleagues clients landlord society people dog walkers newspaper wala the list is endless and that's just golu's list twice that for gudia because she is a social butterfly so this poor couple now has to choose who all to invite they have to make sure they don't cross the 50 people limit while at the same time representing all or most of these groups are you married then you know what i'm talking about this is a tough exercise let's leave golu and gudia to their fighting i, I mean discussion and move on to stocks What if we had to select a small list of stocks to represent a larger list of stocks? There are 1,862 stocks listed on the National Stock Exchange (the NSE). What if we wanted to understand what the entire market's performance was today? There are two ways to do that. First, we either take all the 1,862 stocks' individual performances and then try to arrive at a weighted average return, or second, we take a smaller group of stocks which will most likely represent the performance of the market as a whole. If Gudia wants 3 people to represent all her friends, she'll choose her 3 closest friends, which are the most relevant for the friends category. Similarly, in stock market, some larger stocks have a higher relevance or contribution to the overall market performance. Typically, these would be the larger stocks. A big movement in a large stock will affect the market more than that in a smaller stock, since more money is invested in the larger stock. So now, if we wanted to more or less replicate the return of the entire market, Instead of investing in all 1862 stocks, we can just invest in the stocks included in the index. If less number of stocks mimic the market return, that's better, right? We won't have to pay brokerage and transaction charges in investing in all 1862 stocks. What we have discussed so far is called a broad market index, meaning that it represents the entire market. There are sectoral indices as well, which try to represent individual sectors like banking, IT, pharma. All of us have heard about Nifty, right? What we have generally heard about is actually Nifty 50, broad market index representing the entire market. For sectors mentioned above, we have Nifty Bank, Nifty IT, and Nifty Pharma, which will have representative stocks from the sectors that they represent. Great. So, what a ratio do stocks hold in an index? There are different ways of creating an index. Some of them are first, market capitalization weighted. This method assigns weights to stocks in ratio of the size of the company or put another way in ratio of stock price multiplied by the total number of shares outstanding. This leads to larger stocks getting more share in the index which makes sense as a change in a large stock might affect more number of people than a change in a smaller stock which would be held by less number of people. Sometimes the number of shares used is not the entire share base but free float shares meaning the number of shares available to general public for trading example a promoter of the company will hold their shares with them and that will not be counted in free float shares second equal weighted in this method all stocks of the index are given equal weightage third price weighted in this method weight is assigned just by the stock price to give you an example nifty 50 comprises of 50 stocks selected across multiple sectors and weighted with a free float market capitalization method All right. So now that we know what an index is and how it's constructed, what is it used for? We already know that index gives us a fair idea about the market that they represent. In addition, there are other uses of the index as well. Let's take Nifty Bank as an example. It tells us which of the banking stocks are market movers. Think of stocks included in the index as showcase stocks. This doesn't mean that they will always give better returns than non-index stocks, but it's a starting point to think about the sector. Next, it allows us to compare the return of an individual stock. If an index returns 10% in a period and a particular stock returns 12%, the excess return of 2% is called the alpha of the stock. Higher the alpha, better is the stock performing than the sector. Also, it allows us to compare two different stocks by comparing their alpha with each other. It also helps us to understand how volatile or changeable a stock's price is versus the sector. Example if bank A's beta is 1.3 it means that if nifty bank moves by 10% on an average bank A will move by 13% this can be good for you or bad for you depending on your trading strategy and finally it sets the benchmark for exchange traded funds or ETFs 
These are essentially mutual funds which can be traded on an exchange and try to mimic the return of the index. So index mimics the return of the sector or the entire market and ETFs mimic the return of the index. Aap chronology samajhiye. So that's all on indices. We'll cover ETFs in the next video. And for more such simple explanations, subscribe to our channel. Keep it simple.